The Wednesday Week is sponsored by Michael Constantine Wealth Management. We bet you can't find a financial advisor closer to Hillsborough Stadium. Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Week. My name's Dan Fudge, and with me we've got John, Stevie and Blair. My apologies this week, chaps, for sounding a little bit hoarse, a little bit uh, a little bit ropey. I, uh, I've been in uh, in a town just outside Benidorm called La Cala. Uh, this this weekend, and uh, I've consumed many Fanta limons with the vodka that gives you the bad throat. You know, you know, you get uh, Spanish throat. You know what I mean? I've got I've got that this week, so uh, I'm gonna. Uh, unlike the the powerhouse I am, I'm just gonna crack on and go through it, lads. That's what's happening. You know what I mean? So while I was away, there was a game that happened, a game that saw this fixture last year or the same opponents last year as a wonder goal from uh, from Barry Bannon not really the case this time round but we're going to make sense of it today we're going to talk about whether it was a hard fought win or whether we actually rode our luck a little bit or whether we deserve to win so you know john i'll i'll come to you first um four changes from the uh, from the portsmouth game three of them uh, i offer byers and hunt getting moved to the bench and um, and Gregory obviously serving out his suspension, uh, bringing in uh, Patterson up front, and then we had uh, we had a place there for Femewo and uh, Volks, and uh, who was the other one? There was uh, oh, and that LP two as well. That that sounded like I was having a dig, didn't I? <laughs> LP two, Steve, he got in, he got in. Did you have any concerns at the lineup, John, at the start? Um, not not particularly. I did think. Um... Iofa was probably going to get rested because he did look shaky in, in, that, in that first game. And I think more just wanted to see how it would play out with the new guy uh, for Maywell coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, see if he'd have a bit, a bit more balanced in the back three. Uh, and to be fair, he was rock solid, wasn't he, for Maywell? Absolutely rock solid for that game. Typical, isn't yeah. it? Comes in. Um, remember, reminded me a bit of, if you remember that player we got for only one season, that Aguche. Do you remember Gucci? Anyone who got for AC Milan, the American in, defender? In the in the AO, what was his first he, name? He had a difficult name to pronounce. Yeah, Aguchi Unyewa or something like that. He reminded me of him, calm, assured. Um, you know, and did, what was a putting a foot wrong really? And then uh, the dreaded Wednesday curse strikes again, doesn't it, with the injuries? Yeah, uh, and he goes down innocuously and 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 stays down. You're like, oh god, here we go again. Um, uh, and, and he had to go off, didn't he? So, that, so instantly we, we were changing the, a force change already uh, in the early stages of the game, um, uh, having to, to to make that change. But uh, in what was largely a good first half, which seemed to repeat the pattern of the first game, where we had a, a strong first half and and then a kind of a subdued second half, but uh, managed to keep them out and, and, and seal the win. So yeah, the, the changes were just 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 typical bad luck. The uh, for me, we'll get in the injury there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, 29 minutes of solid assured defending to all to all of a sudden have to, have to walk off. Harley Dean-esque, you know what I mean? But we'll come back to the injuries at some point anyway, later on in the show. Now, Blair, um, 20 minutes gone. Uh, Windass, Josh has gone running to the box. He's, uh, he's, taken a, uh, he's taken a knock clearly well inside the area, right? Yeah, should we take off the bingo card? Um, you need a bit of luck to get promoted. We'll tick that one off. Yeah. Don't don't play well. Get three points. Tick that one off. Did you uh, Did you feel we didn't play well? <laughs> um. Well, it, it, I think more clearly has two two ways of playing an away an away tactic and a home tactic because we we play completely different. I don't know if it's him. I, I think it must be him saying play more cautious. Don't don't you know what I mean? Don't leave this space in behind and at home under Hillsborough. And then I think it's like the, another cliche, another bingo card, win your home games, draw your away games. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he's going for. But I don't, well, you look at the lineup with dropping Hunt for LP2, and I'm not slagging LP2 off at all. But he's I love more... that that name stuck, by the way. <laughs> I'm really, I must have it, Steve, you must be buzzing about that. <laughs> <laughs> he's a defensive, he's a defensive right back. Not like a, an early not an atta- album, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> not an attacking um, fullback, but. Yeah, so I, yeah, I don't think we played well at all. Um, but I suppose I mean you can play well, can't you? You can you can play well without the ball, I suppose. But we were so conditioned. But like last night between Watford and West Brom, you know, what I mean, everyone will say, "Oh, West Brom and a Miles better team." But the argument could be well, Watford played quite well defensively. So well, yeah, I mean, it's, it, depends, it depends how you're looking at. It. I think we didn't play that well, but because I wanted us on the ball more and attack more, but defensively yeah. they were solid, weren't they? 
there's de- there's definitely a difference in terms of possession stats as well with them having a whopping 67 percent possession but obviously that was them chasing the game i mean they Steve, they, they, sorry, on, they suit us um because they, they don't put a lot of crosses in no mk dot <laughs> and that's our achilles heel isn't it so yeah, who's, who's been scouting us then for that game? You're going to watch it last week, aren't you? Really? Yeah, clear, clearly not. Uh, clearly not done their own work trying to trying to play in in through five defenders. Now, Stevie, you know, uh, they were chasing the game. Second half had a you know a lot more from MK going forward, but um, but uh, you, there's got to be a big shout out here for FDB and some of the. Uh, the way he harried some of their defenders and absolutely shrugged them off the ball was absolutely impressive, right? Yeah, he had a good game, didn't he? I yeah, I thought he was, and I know there were there was a, a clamouring for Stockdale um, getting the man of the match, and I think Hennigan got team of the week. Um, I think it was was it Shay Shay's dad put out the tweet asking for your man of the match, and I immediately jumped on. I thought FDB was outstanding again. Um, mm-hmm. His work in the first half was quality. Um, you know the highlight of which was the you know the shrugging of the uh, the, the the right fullback off uh, mm-hmm. to get the ball, and you know it's one of those where that's difficult because it's very easy to give away a foul in those sort of situations. You've got to use your body in the right way. Um, never a foul. Um, laid the guy off the ball, and made him look absolutely lightweight, and went on, um, and then took the shot where he could have potentially passed the ball to Windass or, or Patterson. Um, I think he had every right, given the week before, to to go and get the shot off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I thought it was brilliant. I thought he, he, his link-up play was great. I had a, uh, a fairly quiet 15 minutes sort of truncated either side of the half of, of half time. But um, what I liked about him and what I liked about us, just as a, a sort of a an overall sort of perspective, is that when we got down to that last sort of 10 minutes, including injury time, it, it was one of those where traditionally we'd concede traditionally we'd, we would be under more pressure um, say what you want about the performance. And I have got sort of opinions on the performance on Saturday. I don't think we're as bad as people may believe we were or, or, or made out. I thought it was very workmanlike, but that mm-hmm. last 10 minutes, we were down the final third. We were getting the ball into the corner. We were, you know, we were winning those corners and FDB was front and center of that. And then, you know, they couldn't get the ball off him. He was the one that was being called over by buyers and, Hunt, I want to say it was. It might have been somebody else was calling him over uh, to get around the, you know, the ball in the in the corner because they they just knew that those MK Dons players wouldn't be able to get the ball off him. Uh, testament to him. Um, he started well against Portsmouth. And I think he's just taken it to the next level um, on Saturday. It's actually quite refreshing with somebody like FDB because there's times when he does a great performance and then the following game he kind of doesn't shine to the to the light that he could do that, that he, he did in previous weeks. So, so, you know, it's nice to see him having a couple of, a couple of, um, well, stringing a couple of games together as it were, and managing to maintain a decent, a decent bit of form. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and you know what, the, there was a lot of talk at the back end of last season about whether or not he's going to play. And we spoke last week and we, you know, I've put out and I don't want to go over the, the same sort of stuff that we've talked about previously as to whether or not, we should be retaining him or letting him go and looking to replace with somebody else. Um, but I think the, the 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 vast majority of people are now coming around to um, that that line of thinking, if you like, that he's somebody we need to be tying down and you know we need to be um, looking to include him because he's going to be a big player. I, I, I did say it last week. Um, he he will go for big money in his career because he's he's got the attributes. He's by no means um, the finished article, but um, you know if he can keep on that trajectory that he's currently on at the moment and, and get some game time and get a run in the side. I, I, I see no reason why um, he can't be, you know, a pivot and a focal point within the team. I think it's absolutely essential. The best bit of business that we do this, um, this pre-season or this transfer window is getting him tied down and getting him secured because um, I think he offers something different to buyers. He offers something different to, uh, to Bannon. He, he, he's different in terms of the, you know, the, 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 the stature, the physique, uh, the athleticism that he's got, that raw power. Uh, we do respect to the, to the other lads. And I'll take Bakington out because I've said, and I've said before, I've never seen the guy play football. I don't know if he's, if he's any good or not. He might be outstanding. He might be a bag of shite, to be honest with you. But at the minute, for the, the players that we've got, I think FDB is something different and it, it's refreshing to see him. Um, he's, he's not necessarily going to be the one that's, you know, pulling up trees and, and turning heads with his, his sort of his, his fancy passing of the ball and so forth. But, He's an exciting player to watch when he's in full flow, when he's got that ball at his feet and he's he's turning players and, you know, he's, he doesn't overcomplicate things. 
Um, but he loves that pirouette, doesn't he? He loves it. He loves yeah. getting ball and turning and spinning round. And you know, I, I've said it before. You know, bless his heart, Chris Waddle was probably one of the best players that we ever had. But you know, he had certain tricks that he went to game in game out that players you knew what he was going to do, but didn't mean that you could stop him from doing it. And I'm not for for one minute comparing Deli Bashiru to Chris Waddle. But what I am saying is that he's got a he's got an arsenal that he goes to, and it's difficult to get the ball off him. It's mad I mean, what a summer does, doesn't it? Sorry, Dan. It's, it's mad what an off season does to a player because mm-hmm. no one was saying, you know, when they did their predicted their predicted first team eleven, their first eleven. FDB in it wasn't in anyone's, maybe in Stevie's, maybe, not. but it, it wasn't in anyone's online. You know what I mean, no one was saying start Delhi Bashiru, and for me, he's the best player at the club now. <laughs> I, I think I, I, from what I've seen these past two games, like he's the he's my first name on the team sheet. Do you know what I mean? He's the one who gets you off your seat. He's exciting. I think he's going to get people wanting to go to see him because when he's on the ball, he's going to do something. He drives forward. He pushes his players off him. It's like exciting to watch him. It's almost like watching Antonio again. Um, wow. It's like, what, what makes me laugh is like, Kim and Wallace was like unbelievably good for us. And then on one summer, he came back and he was rubbish. Yeah. And you're like, it's just like that, but reverse. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I mean, to be fair, Blair, what did you what did you think of Backinson when he came on? Did he any anything? I mean, stick it, out it was on it was on for like three minutes, and I had a baby in my hand, so I, I didn't really pay attention to it, to be honest. But... I, I thought you, I thought it was all right. You know, um, he, he, he strikes me as one of those players. If you look at the the fee that we've got him for, we I think we've only paid for it about fifty grand for him. Um, and he's co- coming with a lot of baggage and so forth. It almost smacked a little bit of desperation and us wanting and needing to get somebody in the squad to just fill it out a little bit. Um, and I say that with due respect. I, I, before Saturday, as I said, I've, I'd never seen the guy play football. Um, so I, I, I'd had no opinion on what, what he was going to be like. I'd like to see him play tomorrow night. I think that would yeah. be the opportunity to get him in and just give him... Uh, a start and have a look at him properly uh, and reserve judgment. But the bits that he did do, he's a, he's a big old unit, isn't he? He's not necessarily, he's, he's, he's quite slight, although he's tall, he's quite slight, but the, the, the bits that he had to do on Saturday were, didn't offend me. Well, he played, every, he played every game for Ipswich when he got on loan and the, the uptick in form, second half, second half of last season, might, it might go to hand in hand together and Bristol City gave him a new contract before we signed him. Well, it, but to be fair, you know, normally I'd, I'd agree with you there, Blair, but I, I, I know, I have genuinely no idea in the absolute universe of the world how Nigel Pearson is still the manager at Bristol City. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. They got him in for about eight games at the back end of one season and he did nothing. Then they gave him a contract. He's carried on to do nothing. And he's just so. carried on doing nothing. He's had the chairman pinned against yeah. the wall. That's what it is. It's you are some... not sacking me. Yeah, yeah, it's just, oh, do you want to fight? Well, you know what I mean? And that's it. I think it's similar to what happened with us. I think they went for the Premier League, failed. Yeah. Spent all that money in Aiden Flint, that callous and stuff. Spent a lot of money. Got nowhere near. And it's like breaching effort. Well, what had happened to us? They, mm-hmm. they were, I think, probably behind the scenes, they were very close to doing that. Yeah, so, they were. But they've got a better chairman than us who's got a hell yeah, of a setup, yeah. they? <laughs> yeah. Now, now, John, there was there was uh, an elongated ninety uh, odd minute performance from uh, from Volks in the middle of the park. Nearly, uh, nearly got himself onto the score sheet as well at one point with with a bit of a long range hit. There was a, I think there was a couple went in. I think FDB went running down the left, cut inside, got uh, got deflected. Then I think one fell to Windass. It might have been, and then that got deflected. And it fell to Volks. The technique in which he hit that was absolutely beautiful. You know what I mean? A difficult one for the goalkeeper. What did you think to Volts' performance? I think it, it was showing that what you're going to see when he's fully fit, I still think he's got a, a, a little bit to go there in terms of fitness. Um, he was carrying a bit of an injury, wasn't he, in pre-season. So um, I think he's still trying to build up to that full fitness. And like you said, there are a lot of nearly moments in that MK Dons game. Uh, Volks with a with a chance there and also... One way I thought FDB was certain to score when he cut inside his last man in, in the box, I thought he's going to rattle this in and, 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 and somehow they managed to get a block. So, uh, yeah, I think Volks is showing you what he's got potentially more than what Luongo got, he has had, sorry, in that same position in, in his passing ability. So that he, he, he's got an eye for a pass. He's uh, very measured with his passing, uh, very calm on the ball. Um Obviously, probably not as good in, in terms of winning the ball by, like Luongo did, but um, that's where other players can sort of help with that. Like, uh, I think, like you said, Backinson can play that position as well. So I think Volks um, will probably get a run out tomorrow, for sure. 
uh, it, it, all in terms of uh, getting that fitness uh, back up to, to full speed, match, match sharpness and all that lot. So, um, yeah, I, I, some promising signs for Vox. I think he'll be, I think he'll be a good player for us, um, especially when we play three in the middle there. I think that's where he'll excel, um, which it looks like we're going to play that way as well. So uh, I'll, I'm, I'll be quite shocked if he's not starting tomorrow against uh, Sunderland for sure. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I tell you what, what uh, we're, I know we're only two games in, but I, I haven't heard yet the uh, bloody Darren Moore don't know his best formation because obviously we had quite a certain amount of success at the start of this calendar year towards the back end of last season. And then we've stuck with it. So now we've we've kind of put people, we've put round pegs in round holes this time. We've signed people to play into that into that setup, which I kind of enjoy. Um, and then I, I, I need to give special mention as well, John, to, uh, to Hennigan as well. I, I obviously, I, I popped a tweet out earlier on saying, you know, I was it um who's your man of the match and Henne- Hennigan and Stockdale did get did get a couple of decent not shouts there. Yeah, Hennigan made the uh League One team of the week, didn't they? Which mm-hmm. made me smile and think of Steve immediately. But <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> last <laughs> week you weren't having him. Uh, yeah, he made more clearances on his own than the entire MK Dons team did in that match, apparently. Um, I think that says more about Hennigan. our uh, our hoofing um, ability rather than yeah. rather than their defending, to be fair, mate. Possibly, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that—that's his job. He's being brought in for that purpose. He's not a—he's not a, a stylish defender. He's a no-nonsense, get it clear, particularly in the air um, with his height. Uh, get the, get the ball out, thump it clear, no nonsense. And uh, that's what we needed, and it's particularly in that second half. Although, as Blair said earlier on in the in the, in the podcast, it. They didn't really exploit our aerial weaknesses like you would expect them to. If having uh, if they'd have seen the game that we had uh, the previous, you know, against Portsmouth, you'd have thought they'd have been popping them in from all angles. But uh, that wasn't the case. But yeah, Hennigan uh, Hennigan had a solid game for sure, and uh, he did uh, exactly what we brought him in to do. Um, although I also thought that. Um, just casting my mind back as well, looking at some of the extended highlights. I thought once again, um, uh, Johnson was, was was putting some quality balls into the box as well. See, that's that interesting. Time. I was going to bring up Johnson later on because that ball down for FDB that um, that Stevie mentioned earlier on, it was like a seventy yard ball, and it was right into the corner, and it gave FDB the opportunity to get across, and like Stevie says, make him look like a bit of a bell end. And he got right underneath him, made him look slow, sluggish, like he was running treacle. And then he's cut inside. And all that started from Johnson's really clever, clever pass. Yeah, he, he, he just, if you give him time and space, he's got he's going to he's going to um, he's, he's got that in his locker for sure. And, and the, he, what I like about Johnson is he he's, he doesn't have to take a touch and then get a cross in. He'll, he's a first time crosser. He likes to hit it early, so being naturally left footed as well, which we've missed over the years uh, down that side at, at times. So, um, yeah, it was a great ball, uh, particularly uh, um, what you said there for FDB. Uh, and some of the others, I think we were just unlucky. And Smith being playing, uh, um, you know, like we expected him to before he got that this mm-hmm. injury. It would have been absolute fodder for him, some of them balls that Johnson were putting in. But obviously mm-hmm. with, with um, Gregory out and Smith injured, uh, yeah, Pato has his moments, but he's, he's let's be honest, he's still a makeshift striker, isn't he? That's what he'll always be with us. He's a converted right back and he's just a bit of a shit house that would stick up front to just rub off his nose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Now now Steve Patterson's an interesting one, isn't he? Now he's come in to like, you know, fill a hole, as it were. And there's a great moment in the second half where he's got clean through and he's coming in from the uh, from the right hand side. And it, it's weird because if you look at the goal that we scored last week against Portsmouth, where Windass really held his nerve to wait for the players to flood into the box and then we put it away lovely. Um, why did he do that? Like, he just, he just went, oh, fuck this, I'm knackered. and just hoid it at the keeper, didn't he? Yeah, I, I think to be fair to him on that one, um, he'd have been waiting a little, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. One of those uh, broken, but you're right. You're right. You're both right. He's a makeshift striker. Um, I do feel for him a little bit because I think of all the players in the squad at the moment, he seems to be the one that, you know, stuck with us when we came down from the championship, was had a bit of name value for from his time at Cardiff and, you know, was an asset. And we were happy to have him tied down at the back end of last season. Or, yeah, sorry, the start of last season. Um, 
you, you can look at our best 11. I don't see where he gets in. I don't see what what position he is other than cover and a squad player at the moment. And that's no detriment to him. I, you know, I, I like the bloke as a person. I think he's a character. He strikes me as somebody who, who, who wants to do well for the club and, and, you know, he's the kind of player that we need around. Um, but he's he's when it when push comes to shove, he's he's not going to be a he's not going to lead the line like a Michael Smith potentially will do. He's not going to be a, a hold up player like Gregory is. And we talked about that last season. He, the ball doesn't stick with him, does it? You know, no. it, it, it'll come back. Um, we, we've now got a, a, a plethora of central midfield players or players that can play central midfield. He don't fit in there. Um, he's not going to be a, a makeshift centre half this season. All being well, touch wood. Um, so it's almost like, you know, we, somebody said last week, I think, um, or somebody said somewhere, you know, if, if Hunt isn't playing, who's our, who's our cover for right wing back? Because Palmer's not it, which, you know, that's a conversation for another time. Patson's probably the, you know, the next shout in there, isn't he? Yeah. Um, he's, he, he puts himself about, he's a nuisance. Um, there was one instance in the second half when they put a bit of pressure on, to be fair. Um, mm. and Stockdale had come out and punched the ball. And what Patterson likes to do, if any any sort of contact, he'll go down holding his head and it breaks play up. And he did that really well on Saturday because they were, you know, they were starting to bombard our area a little bit. But he's taken, a, you know, a, a love tap to the back of the head and gone down like he'd been shot in the back. It was, you know, it was almost like apocalypse now. He's sort of down on the floor sort of thing. So he broke the game up when he needed to there. But, you know, in terms of that top level quality and, and getting people on board, I think there's... There's a difference between your like the likes of your Johnsons, who over a period of a season or a few months within last season got people on board and got them on side with improved performances and quality output. And you can look at the the development of a Dele Bashiru. Um, bless his heart, I don't see I don't see Patterson doing that. To be honest with you, no, fair enough. I mean, it, to be fair, he got he was quite annoyed. Him and Windass were quite annoyed when FDB went into yeah. the box yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. earned that shot himself. But yeah. if, if you watch it back. Patterson did not have a clean shot at that goal at all. Like the, the defender had gone right in front of him. He'd have just booted it at the geezer's legs. Um, now, one last thing, Blair, just on uh, just on this uh, this game. Uh, Stockdale came away with a lot of plaudits. Two rapid saves and then a decent one about 10 minutes later. I mean, we had, we had a great in-depth chat about our goalkeeping options last week. I mean, what, what did you think about it? Well, yeah, I mean, it proved why we signed him, didn't it? Do you know what I mean? It also proved why he made the most saves in the in the league last season. Why he won the Golden Glove because he, without him, probably that would have finished one one. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah, that, that one, that, that one that the, went the right one, down to his right. Where yeah, he hit the yeah. Ground really the one quick. Joe Cran um, posted. Mm. Um, like that, that one is a fantastic save because he hit it hard and low, and then that the people like when last week people were going, "Oh, he's so fat. He's, he's he dives in slow motion." Well, he didn't look like he. He dove in slow motion on um, Saturday, did he? No, so, yeah, no, he didn't. For, I, I for a big he, I, stag, he got down quick, didn't he? Yeah, I think he's, I think he's quality. Yeah, really happy with him, to be honest. And again, the, the Portsmouth goals, there's nothing he could do with him. <laughs> there's <Literally, laughs> nothing he could do with him. Isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. We did talk about that last week in terms of the goals. And, I, you know, I, mm-hmm. not to say that, not one to say that I told you so. And, you know, I think Ben had a, <laughs> the shit, the, the similar sort of opinion when he was talking about it last, last week as well. Um, it's my first first one of the season, but um, Sheffield Wednesday Twitter is fickle as fuck, and he's gone from being you know overweight, useless, too old, not good enough for this squad to being the second coming of Kevin Pressman. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> who, who, let's be honest, weren't exactly trim himself. Well, wow. <laughs> pick a name, Kevin Preston. <laughs> but I, I, he, everything that he had to do on Saturday, he did really, really well. Um, still. If you were going to find a criticism, there are a couple of times where his kick in, his distribution when he goes long can be a little bit inaccurate, if you like. Um, but as a shot stopper, I think he proved on Saturday, as a shot stopper, anything towards him and around him um, from a reactionary point of view, he's as good as we're going to find in this league. He's going to drop bollocks. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to concede goals. Um, but that's the nature of being a goalkeeper at Sheffield Wednesday because he's got that back three in front of him. But again, um, we've, got, we've got a midfield. We've got a midfield that don't want to. We, we best one in the world. We haven't got a midfield that's going to track back and support. Um, you know, like like we want them to as a fan base because that's you know Barry Bannon's not a, a defensive midfielder. Uh, Byers in, Volks in, and we're we're talking about Dele Bashiru being an absolute unit. He's the kind of player that we're saying go forwards, and he was actually the player that went and played up top. 
when um, when we took yeah, Windlass. He played down the middle for a bit, didn't he? Yeah, we we, we took Windlass. The, the the two subs were made on seventy seven minutes. We took Windlass off and stuck Dele Bashiru up top, um, just to have a look at him. And I, I, I he, he, it looked comfortable. I thought he was steady, and I think he's going to have that versatility. I think obviously first and foremost, he's going to be a, a, an attacking midfielder or that that sort of link player, not a number ten, but somebody who's going to burst from midfield and get forwards. Um, but he's proven almost to, to Pato's detriment that he, he might be sort of jumping in front of Patterson and being the next centre forward that we've got. But, you know, overall, people will talk about the performance on Saturday and say, you know, it wasn't the best performance. We've ground out a result, blah, blah, blah. These are the games that when we when push comes to shove at, at, at the end of the season, it would always be like That's the, never bingo one. That's never bingo yeah, card. It, end it, of the it, season. It, It'll be the like of the the like of these games are the reason why we finished where we finished last season because we dropped points against teams that you know when when we've controlled games going into that final sort of five ten minutes we would have conceded last year and you can you can talk about that period in October and November where we dropped was it ten points from twelve against Lincoln we dropped last season Lincoln and Shrewsbury we dropped points at AFC Wimbledon we dropped points against Morecambe they're the, they're the games that cost us last season if somebody had said to us four points out of six against them two including the clean sheet and we're going to beat MK Dons on their patch people let's be right people would have bit their hands off for it and you know if we, if we keep going on that four in terms of the output of the results then we, we'd be absolutely fine but I think Stockdale coming in you know he feels more it feels more assured with him in there than Peacock Farrell. I'll say it. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Go on, experience, John. isn't it? His experience is, um, you know, I mean, I mean, the, the goal at Ipswich, which Peacock Farrell, you know, when he messed up, I mean, you're not going to get that from Stockdale. He's too, you know, he's too long in the two for stuff like that. His experience is, um, like Blair said earlier, with the um, the amount of clean sheets that he got last season was the highest in the division once he got the Golden Glove. Um, I think he communicates well with the with the back line as well, um, which 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 helps because I think that's what you know. And, and yeah, there's there's distribution issues, but Westwood had that, and he was still quality, weren't he? So we we, we can live with that. His primary uh, role is is keep it, is, is saving shots and uh, you know being commanding his box well, and he's, he's showing that he does that well at, at this level for sure. So I'm, I'm I'm happy with it. He bounced back because he did get some unfair criticism from last from the last game, um, and he's bounced back well. And yeah, also I think that um, when, when we sit here with four points, which is a good you know a good tally after after the two fixtures, when you look at it, uh, if we'd have beat um, Portsmouth and then drew with MK, there'd probably be a few more happy in the fan base, even though it's the same amount of points. It's just that feeling of winning the games at home and then getting what you can away, isn't it? So. But it's still the favourites, the top six we've, we've played as well. It's not like last season yeah, with exactly. Donny and Charlton. And Charlton, like, we don't know what they're going up to. Donny weren't, 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 weren't going to challenge for the top top six anyway. So we've, we've... By the way, was, uh, and just, a, just a final thing from me on, 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 that, on that game. What tremendous support, again, we took to that ground. I, I, I've, made a, uh, I've made a note of that. That is absolutely mental. What was it, Steve? Six, six and a half thousand, mate, were it? Yeah. Six and a half. Um, yeah, it was, atmosphere is absolutely quality. Um, you know, just as a visual, it's difficult. It was difficult being there because I was, when we went last year, I was on the upper tier. It was behind, right behind the goal, just on the right-hand side um, on Saturday. So it's... Visually, it's very difficult to see what it looked like until you see it on, you know, the football away day Twitter and, and or, or whatever it is that's saying six thousand five hundred fans, which is uh, usually just us and Leeds a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, to to look at it the other way, um, support were great, fan base were great. I love going to MK Dons. It, it, it will forever be the my, my, my little girl's first away uh, fixture last year, and she loved it, and she loves going back. Um, or well, the, the win every time is yeah, <laughs> we go down. Um, but you know what? What I would say is that stadium is phenomenal. The you know the the, the access to it is great. Um, the amenities around it are brilliant. It, it serves its purpose for a community like Milton Keynes. The the sad thing is when you look at it, that's a thirty thousand seat stadium. The six thousand yeah. five hundred Wednesday fans. I think the the, the attendance I've written it. The down. attendance was thirteen thousand. We were literally it, half the crowd. It was it, yeah. it was mental, and you you're looking at it, and it's like you know when you you go to a concert and you 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 get there an hour early, and you can see people that are sitting there, and they're just dotted around randomly everywhere in an in an arena. That's what it looked like, and 
it's just it's, it's a real shame that that stadium doesn't get used as it could be because or it should be because it's it's just been built in a in an area that it, it, it doesn't need to serve if it, if that makes sense. Did you see the video of someone film? I don't know why people do this. The film in Josh Windass. So MK Don's fans filming John, Josh Windass, oh, the and then, then he scores. The then he scores yeah. it, yeah. and then obviously he's like, "Oh fuck off!" and all that sort of stuff. But then post it as well. Like, why film it in the first place? It's, it's an opera, you know what I mean? And then post it online when I mean, it's someone else scoring against you. I, I, I just don't get it, <laughs> personally. No, no. <laughs> that is it, one. You know what? The, 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 the fan base first half, we were on top in, for, in the first half and I thought we had the, the, the lion's share of, of, the, of the game and the, the chances. And by rights with, you know, Bannon getting one straight down the goalkeeper's throat after 20-odd seconds, it set the tone for the, for, for that first half. We got the penalty. If we'd have got another one, it, we, we'd have won at a procession. Absolute fact. Um, we dug in. I think Moore's acknowledged the fact that we sat a little bit deep in the second half. Um, it felt flat, if I'm honest with you, um, second half. Our fan base is amazing. We're great. We sing when we need to sing. We we, we get behind and we'll do it again on, uh, on Saturday at home. We'll do it again next Tuesday night against Peterborough. I think we just need... Just as an observation, we, we we need the the performances on the pitch. And I've got no criticism with the result, and I'm I'm the kind of person that would say we'll win how we win. Um, we need something to 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 give that fan base a, an opportunity to sing about because once it, it, we got to half time, it was it was fairly flat second half. Well, yeah, against Peterborough next week, we've got three three thousand six hundred going to Peterborough on Tuesday, and then five five and a half thousand going to Bolton the week like the following mm-hmm. Saturday. Just mm-hmm. insane, really. Yeah. I, so, I absolutely, we, we, I love we, it and I hate we, it. We, we could double it. We could double it um, <laughs> in the stadium. We'd sell it out if they if they'd offered us seven thousand on Tuesday, we'd fill it. We'd we'd take it. That's a fact. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's that's one of the uh, the drawbacks of living away from Hillsborough and being an away supporter, as it were. And then every because we're in league, it. yeah, because we're in league <laughs> one with these shitty little grounds. I remember there was one year I was living in living in Croydon, and the opening game of the season was Dagenham and Redbridge. <laughs> and uh, and their entire ground held the same amount as our away end. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, well, that's gone to shit. Oh, said, just a quick one on that one. I'll never forget this. My sister was on Facebook. The fixtures came out. And I think we'd just come down, haven't we? Or they'd just come up. Mm, over that both. One. And um, she just put on Facebook, Dagenham and Redbridge. Bad times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a sober that one. That was a live now. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, this is this is our bad. Giles spot, Cook man. scored, I think. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think one two <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So some lad who does some with his spare oh, time. Oh yeah, I, I, Clinton I, Morrison scored as well. He got the other one. That's the one. I right. That's right. That's right. Okay, <laughs> so uh, stop there. Rapid saves. I've got that one. Then we've got his wonder save there. Now John Silasau or Silasau as it were. He's been linked in the... Now, he, he, bear in mind, we had an opportunity where we made some subs and we didn't bring him on. So we had a makeshift striker in FDB, but we didn't bring on Silla. Now, he's been the subject of some transfer speculation this week from uh, Dutch club De Graaf Sharp. Um, get rid, in it? It's a really odd one, that, Dan, because it, behind the scenes it seems like you know that they're, they're tweeting stuff from there and in Holland about you know so yeah. so imminently joining and then when the press when more comes to the presses and they ask him about it he just says well he's trained with us this morning so you know I think it's uh, one of them the though because because a chance theory has to have the the final say on everything I think we'll hear more about it about half past 11 tonight which is usually the case yeah. isn't it <laughs> Yeah, I think well, I, th- I think his days are numbered with this, and I think the only reason he hasn't gone yet is just because they're just worried about leaving themselves light up front, you know. Um, Someone's got to play Papa John's. Well, yeah, there's there's, there's, there's <laughs> Papa John's to come, isn't there? There's um, there's League Cup uh, tomorrow. Um, there's the transfer window uh, at the end of the month, so I'm sure we've got a, a few irons in the fire there. We're looking for some loan players from the 25 man squads that get finalised in the Premier League, so. Yeah, I think Silasso's days are numbered. I think he will be moved on. But it's just weird how it's going on where the, the, the other team in you know in, in Holland are tweeting stuff out and then Moore's like, well, he's in the squad, he's training. So as far as I'm concerned, he's still he's still part of the team. Although did you did you guys see the, the guy that's um for the other 
the Dutch club, that Den Bosch that you like, um, Fudge, they got a player rumoured to be signing for an English team, and his name is Jiz Hornkamp. Jiz Hornkamp, yeah, I'm very aware of Jiz Hornkamp. I saw a fantastic tweet from not from a Nottingham Forest fan who said, if we sign Morgan Gibbs White, <laughs> Jiz Hornkamp will be the only Jiz flying in Nottingham tonight. <laughs> Fucking hell, bro. Are you all right, boy? <laughs> that, that creased you up halfway through the gag. Tell me again, yeah. what? So basically, so he said... If, if Morgan Gibbs White signs Forest, <laughs> Jiz Hornkamp won't be the only Jiz flying into Nottingham tonight. Jesus, Mary Joseph on toast. <laughs> Sweet child of mine. Steve, you were going to say something about Silaso. Yeah, I think they, I've seen something in the local press today. I don't know if anybody else has seen this. The, the hold up seems to be that, uh, I'll stand correct, it was either Alex or Joe who put something out. The hold up seems to be that um, they are expecting to sign him without paying a fee. Um, right. Obviously, we want we want some sort of money to we want to recoup something on him uh, because obviously he's our player. But um, they're they're talking about having him as a free, free transfer and just getting the trans uh, sorry getting the wages off the bill. Uh, but we're expecting some sort of money to be transferred across. Whether or not that's something that's a a point that can be addressed and we can get that sorted um, in the next couple of weeks, I don't know. Um, his his time's done into. I don't expect him to to play tomorrow night. Um, Having said that, he's probably going to be first name on team sheet. But um, I, it's just one of those things. We, we say it all the time, and I've said it, you know, this season and last season as well. For for all the players that we sign, not every single one of them is going to work out, and you're going to get some sort of collateral damage if you like. And unfortunately, he, he might end up being an outstanding player in the future. But um, it's it's just not worked out for him at our place. Absolutely. I mean, bear in mind as well, like we, you know, we had this conversation a couple of times last season that when he's been called upon in terms of the cup squads, he's produced. He's actually scored goals. You know what I mean? But that he's obviously showing Darren Moore that when it comes to the league, and there's been a few times he's he's played in the league where he's just not at that level. And I know I'm talking about League One. If you're not at League One level, then sweet child of mine, we're not getting out of it. You know what I mean? The Eredivisie is weird. Like the Eredivisie is so strange. Like some players can come out of it playing the Premier League, and some players, and then still a sell kind of playing League One. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. It it is. It is absolutely insane. But you you're absolutely right, Steve. It was Alex that uh, that sent it out. Sent it out today, it was. So uh, it said, uh, Graf Schapp have made it clear their interest in Al's forward till so who's in the final year of his Wednesday contract, having signed the free last summer. Graf Schapp's inspect- interest has been played out in Netherlands-based newspaper De Gelderlander, who's carried quotes from the club's technical director, Peter Bijveld, that suggests they'd hope to complete a free transfer this week. But we're obviously after some money. So, uh, What's that journalist's name? Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, hang on. Uh, but, uh, you're gonna the, you're going to do the camp accent as well, eh? so, Yeah, that, that fruity Dutch accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peter Bivelds. Right, hey, guys. Delicious. <laughs> uh, every time I try and do a Dutch accent, I always think Gold member. That, that old <laughs> Harry Enfield sketch where he goes, you mean good? My name is uh, Per, per Schlunham. And uh, I'm, we also introduced the uh, the English football fans when you come over here fighting to some really good blow and the WPCs, the Women Prostitute Constables. Uh, I don't know if you remember that sketch, but I've just realised how uh, how technically incorrect it is nowadays. But, uh, and we'll move swiftly on. Right then, Blair. Edit that bit out for Vic, by the way. Hey, just edit that bit out before Vic is. Yeah, it. she's she's already texting me now, but she's probably <laughs> she's probably listening. She's going to give me a right load of views about that one. Listen, Blair, so for yes, a good number of years, we have struggled with injuries. Mm. We've absolutely struggled with injuries. It's been bloody awful, as it were. Now, going back to the star today again, Alex has once again has given us some nuggets that the training pitch finally is getting looked at. And we're also introducing <laughs> some yoga as well. Now... <laughs> I'm down for all of it. I mean, Ryan Giggs played well into his late thirties before he became King Scumbag. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With yoga, and he was one of the big pioneers of it. But uh, do you not feel like it's a bit too bloody late? Well, at least something's getting done. It's better late than never. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I, I don't know why it took this long to, for someone to go <laughs> to finally go. I think this might have something wrong with training pitch, lads. Yeah, in it. <laughs> like, in it. I, I, I love it. I love it if we if we went to the Middlewood now. We just saw like it was just concrete, and we're like, yeah, yeah. I've been after your problem, boys. I mean, that's what yeah. we've been doing all this time. Like, I love the idea of getting a bloke from halfway who wears his trousers <laughs> round his ass and goes, 
Has I been playing footballers on this bloody pitch here? <laughs> <laughs> they joking. What's the matter with you? You absolute yeah. bloody Co- off. Coventry are getting the game suspended for like a bit of, you know what I mean? A bit yeah, of yeah. turf showing. <laughs> yeah, and we're, and we're playing in a car park outside Dog, and, Dog and Partridge in Tinsley. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, has I been putting bloody footballers on this bloody pitch here? They daft apeth. What's the matter with you? I ain't spoke like that in so long. That was... It's just it's just turf over concrete. It's one of, that's what it'll be. It's like of course it is. Proper bodge job. In here. Like... Of course it is. Now, John, it, it's only been three or four years since we had an entire start in 11 out. I mean, come on, bloody hell. That's, it took its time, hasn't it? it it's, quite, it's quite bizarre, really, isn't it? It, it, it? It's still happening. I mean, we had, we saw this with Carlos, didn't we? Like you said, we had, we had, when we had a virtually a full side out. I remember Steve Bruce making comments and you know how long he's been in the game yeah, saying yeah. that in all the, all the time that he'd been in management he'd never seen an injury crisis like we had. And it, it still keeps happening, doesn't it? So it's year in, year out we're still having the same problems with out for two weeks, out for two weeks, out for two weeks and it's like, right, okay, come on. Somebody just get hold of this and find out exactly what's going wrong. I mean, Moore's been pressed about it. Uh, they tried to, although it wasn't fully direct, he did like allude to some things like what they've got now about um, players working on players jumping from the the, the le- from the weaker leg to try and strengthen the muscle in that uh, in that in that particular area. Uh, I think he mentioned the cryo tank. Now I don't know where I don't know where the bloody hell they've stuck that. To be honest, it might be a cryo tank. Thing. Just seems very nineties, though, doesn't it? You know what I mean? It's just so many, it's big and scientific coming for it. Yeah, it does. It sounds like some type of demolition man. Like you know, Sly Stallone's going to come out and start swearing at the wall, and it's going to start issuing him tickets, and they don't know how to use the three shells to wipe their ass. There's some knowledge for you, kids. Blair, you should film. watch that. Great but, kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Ben was uh, on now, yeah, he'd be sat there going, what the fucking hell, yeah. what are you talking about? Simon Phoenix, mate. Uh, <laughs> and I wonder if he's going to be like, what the fuck? What, what are you on about? <laughs> you, don't, what, you don't know how to use the three shells, which I can only assume is some kind of scraping motion, which I don't want to think about. Slice Stallone and his yeah. palsy face wiping his ass with a shell. Any road, let's move on. Right then, tomorrow night, we've got EFL action against the team that knocked us out the playoffs last season. So, um, I mean, what, do we need a cup run, Steve? Um, I, we're not going to get a cup run, are we? We no. I think it's important that we try and get some sort of momentum. It'd be, yeah, I think it's important that we we we're sensible in terms of the team selection. I think it's important that if we whatever team we put out there, um, we put out a competitive team that's going to try and win. Um, I'm I'm all for um you know, going as far as you can in every competition that you possibly can. Um, this isn't something that we're going to win, but if it's, you know, if it's an opportunity to to, to get a tie and a, a, a game against somebody that from, from the Premiership in, in round two or round three, and you only need to go back to the Arsenal game, what was that, 2015, seven years ago now. Good um, you know, for that, know. That, that night under the lights is one that will live, long live in the memory of Wednesday fans. Um I'd love to see us get an opportunity to go and do something like that. I'm not talking about us putting out our strongest eleven um, because we need, you know, we need to try and win the thing. But I think we need to be as competitive as, as we possibly can, whilst being sensible. You've got to find the balance between getting players that we want to look after and protect. So the likes of, um, you know, your Gregories and and, and your Bannons, who, who by the way came off with a knock on Saturday, didn't he? So mm-hmm. is is the smart thing to put him in tomorrow night? Probably not. Um, but at the same time, you want you want to you want to blood those players that we've got in, like your Bakinsons or your Backinsons, however you pronounce. Yeah, I want to I want to see them. I want to see the fringe yeah, players yeah, yeah, who we yeah, don't know anything the about. Players, the, the new players that we've got in, you want to give it's an opportunity to have a good look at them, see where they are. But you know, to to, to answer your question, I'd, I'd like obviously I want to win the game tomorrow. Um, just as an aside, we talked about it last season, uh, and I know we're early. And we'll talk about it later in the season, but. Um, do all you can to get us to Wembley and Pizza Cup because it's a, it's yeah. a day out. It's I want a day out. Um, we we all get together. We sit on that banking outside Wembley. Uh, we have a few beers. We we you know we 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 have the Saturday, the Sunday, whenever it will be. Um, we enjoy it. We take we talk about the fan base that we take. If we can take forty fifty thousand fans to to Wembley uh, for a day out, that's that's making memories, isn't it? And it, absolutely, it, it's, it's something that we need to do. Um, we're not going to do that in the EFL Cup, but for me, uh, a night under the lights at, at Hillsborough against an Arsenal, a Tottenham, a Liverpool, you know, a, a Man United, 
um, would, would be absolutely fantastic. So tomorrow night for me, do all you can to win the game. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, John, coming up at the weekend as well, we've got a... Uh, surely it's three points in the bag against Charlton, isn't it? Oh, Charlton. One of the teams that... I don't know why, I just really dislike Charlton Athletic. I don't know, it's, it's from the, the League One season where we were battling with the pigs and then they they ran away and Chris yeah, yeah. Chris Powell their manager when he's swinging on our crossbar when he when they won that game and I remember Johnny they, Jackson they, Johnny Jackson was just a bang in an absolute world always got just, a free he? kick goal yeah and just stuffed us like yeah so and, is he their manager and it, is he no it's um he was temporary manager oh was he I've got some I'll just refer to my notes we've got notes <laughs> yeah. he's uh, Ben Garner is the new manager who they took from Swindon uh, who lost in the playoff semi-finals to Port Vale last season. So they've got Ben Garner now as manager uh, at Derby. Uh, he was appointed by their chairman who wanted more attacking football. So they went for him. And interestingly, they're coming off the 1-0 loss. Uh, mm. uh, sorry, they beat Derby, I beg your pardon. They beat Derby yeah. 1-0 thanks to a Joe Wildsmith error, which led to their goal. So <laughs> cheers, Joe. Uh, and, uh, Agent Wildsmith. <laughs> Brilliant. And, uh, lovely, yeah. So, yeah, um, Charlton, yeah, you never know what you're going to get with Charlton. They have, they, they have a dec- they've got a decent academy. So, some seasons they come in and they look good, like when they had Lee Bowie last time mm-hmm. before he went. And they, they look like, you know, they looked a solid team. And then and in other seasons, they just look like mid-table rabble, don't they? So, um, obviously, they've, they've got a new manager, so they've got a new ethos and got some new players in. Um and they've been a trick, bit of a thorn in the side to us down the past. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a game we should be, we should win. I think it's a game we should be looking to win. Um, I think that uh, that Garner's um, that Garner's interesting actually because I don't you know obviously um, ex Sheffield Wednesday legend Lee Peacock went to Swindon and uh, when I think it was it John Sheridan there as well and yeah. and and it was a right mess. It was a right absolute stinking mm. mess. And to finish in the playoffs uh, after the way the previous season finished was impressive. Um, so uh, you know there's a potential uh, and beating Derby as well is obviously. No, no mean feat, given that the players that they seem to have managed to sign. So, you know, I, I don't know what to do. So, Blair, give me a uh, give me a prediction on on the Charlton game. I mean, it's so weird, isn't it? I mean, hopefully Wednesday win comfortably, but because we were looking at Stockley, um, he'll probably score an header because mm-hmm. it's a classic Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go two one the Wendy. So you're going two one Wendy. What about you, Steve? Um, <laughs> I think we'll be all right. Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I've been conservative for the, the first couple. I, I think we'll be all right. I think we will have learnt lessons in terms of defending from Portsmouth. And I think we'll take momentum from MK Dons. And I don't think we'll play the same side tomorrow night or we'll, we'll play the same side Saturday that plays tomorrow night. I think this, this is an opportunity for us to go and win 2-3-1. 2-3-1. I'm going to put... Two slash three one. Okay. All right then. What about you, John? Then what are you thinking? I'm thinking we're gonna um have a nice, relatively trouble free two nil win. That's exactly what I've gone for as well. Now, in an absolute turn of events, last week I made a uh, I made notes of our predictions and we never really bring these up once we've made them. So uh, not one of us got it right. Uh one nil. We had one one Steve, one one John, one one fudge. It was only Ben and Blair who actually predicted a win and they went 2-0 and 2-1. So the only person who actually got closer to score with a one-goal difference was Ben with 2-1. So, uh, you know, shows what we bloody know, lads. <laughs> um, does anybody have any other business before I wrap this up? Because it's not been an eventful week much, has it? It's been yeah. quite one, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, Tommy Spur completed his cycle challenge to MK Dons, didn't he? Yeah. But, uh, Raised a good amount of money for his uh, for his young gun, and I believe they still got his just giving page up for any any Wednesday nights out there wanting to donate for a fantastic cause. Uh, yeah, if you were, if you go onto the so. club's social media, they've got the links there uh, that you should donate money to for the um, for the great cause that it is. But uh, just well, relatively short one tonight because there's not much happening, and we've got a lot of football to play. So stay tuned. We'll make it up to you next week. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight, Stevie Blair, John. It's been an absolute pleasure. See you later. The Wednesday Week is sponsored by Michael Constantine Wealth Management. We bet you can't find a financial advisor closer to Hillsborough Stadium.